Hi there, my most amazing artist, Ms. Pelavon here to show you how to create a monochromatic gradation from the lightest color, or the lightest value rather, to the darkest value of your color that you choose from the color wheel. So on the paper I'm going to give you, we are going to fold four sections. To do that, you're going to fold your paper in half horizontally, and then you're going to fold it one more time. This will create four equal sections or fourths on your paper. We're going to create four different values of our hue from the color wheel. Now I'm going to lightly draw these lines with my pencil so I know where to stop when I am painting on my paper. And so it's easier for you to see on the video as well. So now I have four sections on my paper that I'm going to fill in with four different values of one color. This is called a monochromatic color scheme. It's also called a value gradation. Gradation means going from light to dark. So you're going to choose from your paint tray, let me move it a little closer, you're going to choose one of the colors from the color wheel. These are called hues, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, or violet. Um, and then you're going to be adding to the, one of those colors white and black in certain amounts. So you're going to be mixing those in a paint palette like this one. I know it's a lot of information going on. Don't worry. Don't panic. It'll be okay. So I'm going to start by getting my um, hue in my paint palette and then I'm going to start mixing some colors in with it. <clears throat> so I, I want to dry my brush all the way because this is tempera paint and tempera paint hates water. It does not like water at all. Water doesn't make it work very well. So you're gonna try to get it as dry as you can. And if that paper towel on your paint um, tray gets really damp, you can go and get another one from the paper towel dispenser whenever you need. So um, we're gonna start with the lightest of the values. And I'm gonna start with a lot of white. So I'm gonna first start with getting some white in my paint palette. To do that, I'm gonna dip the whole brush except for the, the danger zone. I don't wanna get the danger zone messy. I'm gonna dip the hairs or bristles in the paint and I'm going to roll it into my paint palette. I'm gonna do that two times. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Roll it into the paint palette. So you should have a nice big blob of paint. I'm gonna clean my brush so I don't get any of this white paint mixed in with my hues and I'm gonna dry it off really nicely. Let me set this down so I don't make a mess. Okay, now I'm going to take one of the hues from the other side of the paint tray and I'm just going to mix in a teeny tiny bit into this white. So I think I'm gonna do blue. See how much I got? That's all you need. So I'm gonna mix that into the white paint. This is my lightest value that I'm going to paint on the left side. So I'm just gonna spread this out on the left hand side of my painting. I'm just scooping up that paint out of my paint palette and spreading it out. Notice my messy mat is underneath my painting so that I don't get the table all messy. Now Ms. Pelavon, what if I run out of paint? You're gonna mix it again. So you're gonna clean your brush, dry it off, and start over again. Remember how I said to mix this, two, two dips of the white, clean your brush, and one dip of the hue, small dip of the hue. And that should make about the same color. Looking good. All right, I'm gonna go all the way to that line. That's a big space, so you might have to mix a couple of times to make that color. All right, now the next color is gonna be a little bit more blue. So it's still gonna have two scoops of white, but it's gonna have a little bit more blue. So let's start again. Dry it off. So being an artist takes some time, be patient. Two scoops of white. Oops, I got some blue in my white, sorry. Ew, I better be more careful. Clean my brush, 
This is why it's important to clean your brush because you could ruin that white for yourself or for someone else. And then this time I'm going to get quite a bit more blue. I might even dip it in there twice. I am trying to make a darker blue than I had the first time. I think I'm going to put some more blue in this. So notice how I'm twisting the brush to get most of the paint off of there so that I don't end up putting paint in my water. I want to put paint on my paper, not in my water. Dry it off a little bit, and then I'm going to get a second scoop of blue. Ah, that's better. So now this blue is going to look a little bit darker. Oops, I should use both hands. Than the first blue. Do you see the difference? This one is a little bit more blue than this one. So I want to fill that space with my darker blue. Whoops, a little bit of white got in there. Let me scoop it again. If you're holding your brush correctly and you're spreading out your paints precisely and evenly, then you should have enough paint to fill this section. If not, you can mix again. And don't worry about going over the line a little bit because we're going to cover it up later. So now this one here is just going to be blue with a little tiny bit of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some blue and I'm going to put it right in there just to mix it a little bit. Okay, so see how that is blue, but it's a little bit lighter. So I'm dipping, I'm stirring, I'm painting. <clears throat> dipping, stirring, painting. I don't want it to be exactly blue because then that will look um, kind of funny next to that lighter blue. So I don't want it to make it exactly the blue straight from the paint tray. I want to add a little bit of white. Notice I'm doing a good job of covering up all of those white spaces. Dip it, stir it, paint it. All right, now our last color that we're, our last value, I keep saying color, that's not true. The last value of our hue that we're going to make, we're going to add in a little bit of black. And black is the strongest of all of the colors in that paint tray. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you have a lot of your hue and a little tiny bit of the black. So I'm going to get quite a bit of the blue. Looks like there's another color under there. Mm, that's okay. It'll be all right. It's all good. Now, I know blue is really strong, but I want to clean my brush just to be sure. I don't make a mess in the paint tray. This is how much black you need. You should not need any more black. And then you're going to mix it in. Black will make your color darker. Now, if it doesn't look a lot darker, you can add a little bit more black in. I'm going to try to dip it without mixing. There we go. But remember, put in a little black at a time. You don't want to put in a lot. So notice how the color changed between that blue and this one. I'm going to just go up really close to it. These two values are very different. This value is much, much darker than the value that I had prior to this value. Okay. Now these values have special names. When you're talking about a value where you add white, these values over here, these are called tints. Tints, you add white. I think of the T when I think of that. This color right here, this value where we added black, that is called a shade. I try to think of when you're outside in the shade, it's dark. So a shade, you add black. So on your paper today, you want to make sure that you created values from light to dark. And you're going to start with white, and you're going to add a little bit more of the color as you go, and then the final color, you will add a little tiny bit of black. When you're finished, your paper and your messy mat go on the drying rack. Your paint palette, this is very important, I hope you're listening, your paint palette just goes in the sink. You drop it and walk away. And then everything else just stays as it was, and I will collect it, or your materials manager will put it away.